falling through the center of Earth. This is the problem where we, uh, where we drill the shaft down through the center of the Earth and uh, avoided all the liquid hot magma and hot rock hard iron core and everything and all the super high temperatures and we imagined that we were just going to jump through the Earth and see what happened. And the question here was really one about uh, looking at the chain of logic uh, between where you are in relation to the bulk of Earth's mass and what effect that would have on your acceleration uh, due to the gravitational force acting on you. So this is a very um, complicated problem, uh, but one that I think is very important and one that could show up on the final exam because I love the way it ties together the idea of gravity, ties together the concept of net forces and uh, the acceleration and all that. So this is really a very important problem. And um, when we start off, when you jump down through here, here's your friend who dared you to do it, uh, laughing. And here you go, you're jumping and your acceleration immediately is uh, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And you know what, I'm gonna leave off the negative because I think that gets confusing. Uh, but you're falling down into the center of the Earth and all of Earth's mass is below you. That's why you have the full amount of 9.8 meters per second squared. That's acceleration uh, pulling you down. So at this point, all of Earth is below you, therefore there's no conflict about the direction of Earth's gravity. But then when you get down about a quarter of the way down, here you are, and now you're, you're getting gravity pulling you in two directions because you've got most of Earth's mass below you but you still have some above you now. So, um, so you're gonna be pulled a little bit in this direction, but mostly in this direction. And the result of that would be that your acceleration is about half of what it was before. It would be 4.9 meters per second squared in the downward direction, all right? You're still gaining velocity, all right? You're increasing your velocity, um, but you're not gaining velocity as quickly as you were when you jumped here. So that's a difficult, tricky concept. You're still getting faster, but not getting faster as fast as you were before. All right, the rate at which you're getting faster is slowing down. Okay, then you get to the middle. And this is where you reach your top speed. Okay, you get your top speed here, uh, but then you have gravity pulling equally on you in all directions, okay? So you've got half of Earth's mass above you pulling you up and half of Earth's mass below you pulling you down. So the result is uh, a net force of zero, which means acceleration is zero. And if that's true, then that means that you're flying at a constant velocity, all right? Now that only happens for an instant, okay? Because as soon as you pass through the center of Earth, now you're going to be, have a net force pulling you in the upward direction because more of Earth's mass will be above you pulling you up. But just for that instant, you have a net force on you of zero, therefore your acceleration is going to be zero, and therefore you have a constant velocity. So you reach your highest V here right as you pass through the center of the Earth. Okay. Then you get down to this point down here where you're about three quarters of the way through the Earth and now you have most of Earth's mass above you, okay? So that means the net force acting on you is in the upward direction. You've got some gravity pulling you down, but most of Earth's mass is pulling you up. So the net force is up, which means your acceleration is gonna be uh, negative or decreasing. Um, it's decelerating, I'll say it's deceleration, okay? which means you're actually slowing down. You started with high velocity, the net force is up, which means you're getting slower and slower as you fall toward the other end of the shaft here. So your velocity then, we say, is decreasing, getting slower. And then finally, you reach down here, and the net force on you is very strong in the upward direction because all of Earth's gravity is pulling you up, Whereas up here, all of Earth's gravity was pulling you down, and here there was conflicting uh, gravitational forces, uh, so your net force was small. Uh, here you are all the way at the bottom. All of Earth's gravity is pulling you up. Your acceleration is now uh, 9.8 again, but this time pulling you back toward the, second, uh, the center of the Earth. Your velocity right at that point when you reach here is going to be zero. And so uh, you begin to fall back just like 
uh, a rocket reaches the top of its path and starts to fall down. And again, you would oscillate back and forth until you either died and shriveled up or your friend reaches out with one of those poles and grabs you and pulls you to safety. It would take you about an hour and a half to make a complete journey uh, if you fell with no air resistance all the way down and back up through the center of the earth. We don't have any of these shafts built anytime soon, but it'd be fun to test this theory. Um, and you'd probably burn up uh, from the, uh, the friction. Um, it, that's if there's air. Anyway, falling through the earth, very important example. Great write-up in your book about it. This was on some tests and things, so you should learn this.